Green Cooling scores with the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Hello and welcome to another 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. This one's a little bit special. We're on tour. We have come all the way down the road to Clockface. Delighted to be here. Uh, my name is Dave Parkinson, joined as ever by Mr. Steve Beach. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing fine, thanks, Parkinson. Wow, just blue, uh, blue, blue, blue men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just getting things sorted out with a, a little bit of, uh, obviously, the mic control. I think that's a bit better. There we go. Looking that's easy, better. better yeah. Yeah. Yep, doing fine. Uh, been looking forward to this. I'm obviously looking forward to, uh, to the game of the weekend because, <laughs> obviously, when we were down here last... It was a real nail biter uh, and a cracking game all, all to boot. And obviously to look at the other matches as well, which are going to go on this weekend too. Also really pleased to be joined by not one, but by two special guests. We've got Tommy Taylor, whose last game it is, playing for Clockface this coming weekend. How are you doing, Tommy? Okay? Not too bad, mate. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Uh, fantastic to have you as well. So we'll find out a little bit more about you as the show goes on. And uh, Mark Costello. Mark, how are you doing? Are you looking forward to this game? Yeah, we're ready for gold and yeah uh, thanks for coming down and um, yeah you're more than welcome you know that uh, we're sat in your lovely sponsors lounge absolutely fantastic we've just done a video as well which will be appearing sometime on YouTube when I get the chance to get it all edited and everything like that um, but it, it is great to be here again and again thank you for hosting us yeah no problem anytime uh, so let's start first of all Tommy last game Tell us, where did it begin here with Clockface? How have you gone on? Uh, yeah, so I joined Clock under 16s. I'd been at Portigo the whole time before then. When I was six, uh, we folded. So I came down here. Damien, who's chairman at Clock, was keen to get me down. He had been for a while. But once Portigo folded, that sort of gave me the little boot to come on over. I knew a few of the lads from playing them against them at school games. Um, yeah, joined six, under 16s. We won the Division 1 that year and then obviously moved through to Open Age after that. So it was a pretty quick transition then for you, was it? Yeah, it was uh, because we we started under 18s my second year and we folded halfway through. So there's a few of us, uh, me, Gez, John Nicholson, we went straight up to Open Age for a year and then we dropped back down again to the 18s the second year where we came up against uh, with Rick Gorey's team, like like the Carl and Luke Laird and Jordy Cress and people like that. And that's like the spine of our team now in Open Edge. I was going to say, that all those are the, the regular names for Clock, aren't they? You know, so you've all you've all come through at the same time. Yeah, I think we're seeing the rewards for that now as well. Um, obviously, we had a bit of an aging Open Edge team before we joined, and then we all sort of pushed through and basically took over that now. And we've got another big bunch of 18s who've just come through this year as well. Um, so, Mark, in a way, it's like the baton being handed over, isn't it? Well, that's it, yeah. Now we um, I've spoken to you before, Dave. We've got a good balance of uh, youth, youthful energy and uh, experience now in the team. And Tommy being um, one of them experienced players, uh, like you said, it's sadly it's his last game on Saturday, so he wants to go out with a bang. He's going to uh, no doubt have a, a, a big say in the game on Saturday. Uh, he wants to do himself proud and um, the club proud. And yeah, he's touched upon it there about the, the 18s being very, very important down at the club. They're um, feeding that open age um, like I said we, we want them to come through and play open age rugby and, and be at the club um, for as long as they want to play the rugby league you know um, yeah it's exciting times down at clock and um, we've got everything like that uh, in order now uh, and the great thing is you know when you sort of come, come down here you feel that as soon as you walk through the door it's, it's very much a, a club in the middle of its community that's it yeah we've got a big um, um, four acre estate that there's a lot of our younger players that uh, come from that estate and sort of manner and surrounding areas so the, the club's really important it's that um, it provides that uh, that getaway for, for the kids to come down and, and, and enjoy rugby league um, yeah we, we rely on uh, local players and uh, we put an arm around them and, and they enjoy uh, being coached by some quality coaches and yeah they've got a club for life down here uh, and the guy sitting next to you, obviously, you, you've known him for a long, long time. I uh, believe he's been Mr. Versatile down the years, has he? He is. Uh, there's a picture of him actually behind you know, Park. He's got her on there now, so, uh, on that picture behind him. So he's, he's lost all his hair now, Tommy has. That's how much uh, stress we've caused him, putting him in all these different positions down here. No, like I, I've touched upon it with Tommy. He's one of our most versatile players. Prop, I've had him playing uh, prop forward, second row, 13, centre winger. 
and even full back he's, he's going to be sadly missed it, but uh, he's got to take this opportunity with both hands over in Australia and I do wish him the best and like I said I hope he goes out with a bang on Saturday and yeah he'll be um, sadly missed he will be uh, so Tommy tell us a little bit about your Australian adventure point but... yeah so I've got a lad who used to play down here Colin Topping he's already over and uh, he's just joined a new team this year uh, West Mackay Tigers uh, up in Mackay and I was, he was just messaging me one night, said they were missing a few forwards. Um, would it be interesting in going over? And I thought, oh, he's having me on. Um, but I went along with it anyway. And then before you know it, I had um, like directors from that club sending me emails and stuff asking for clips of me playing. So I sent them over. Didn't think anything of it. And yeah, it's just gone from there, really. You could soon be the Sam Burgess of Mackay, couldn't you? <laughs> uh, but maybe not that good. But <laughs> I'll have a go. <laughs> What, what are you looking forward to most about you know this this trip and this opportunity? It's just something a bit different. I think. I think obviously it took something a bit serious for me to leave here because I feel very fond of it down here as well. Um, I like being in my comfort zone and stuff. But it's for probably 26 now. Good time for a change. I might look back and think, oh, I wish I did that. Even if at the minute I'm only planning on doing a year, but I take it as it comes. I've always got this back down here if I decide to come back. It's a real um, it's a real change of pace and change of lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and that's something that I might, you know, take a bit of time to get used to, but like I said, I think I think if I look back in five years from now, I'd, I'd, I'd think to myself, what, 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 would have, what would have happened if I didn't go, sort of thing. So I think for me, even if I go and do a year, which is the plan at the minute, I can come back with some new experiences and, you know, enjoy something a bit different. Now this has put something of a different complexion on this coming game against Siddle, um, you know, because it's turned into a farewell party, hasn't it? Well, that's it, yeah. So we hopefully that we can we can try and get the uh, the result against Siddle on Saturday, and then we can have a, a good sending off party for Tommy after it. And uh, yeah, he's good on the karaoke as well, Tommy. So we've got to win this game, and he can uh, get up there and give us a few songs. So oh, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> so if we stick around, we that's might it, yeah. we might get a couple. Go on, what's she going yeah. to on the karaoke then, Tommy? Oh, me and Gaz, our captain. <laughs> We'll do we'll do it. Uh, Islands in the stream. Get his Dolly Parton, obviously. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so you played Siddle once before. It was quite a while since. Yeah. Um, do you know if any of the players are still going? To be honest, uh, they came down here and beat us 24-0, I think it was, in our first appearance in the Challenge Cup. Um, we know they're a pedigree NCL Prem team, said all, you know what I mean, they're a, they're a cracking club. Um, got, they've got a good uh, experienced bunch up there. I have watched a few videos on them and uh, done a little bit of homework on them. They're solid all around the park. I'm, uh, I'm impressed with the, with the one. He likes to link into play um, very well. Six and seven move the ball about really well, so they'll, they'll be shifting us about the pitch. And they've got like a big... Um, the big energy in the middle so yeah it's going to be a difficult game we're under no illusions Parker we know what we need to do we've just got to look after ourselves do our things right um, let's get in the sheds at half time let's be in that game and and yeah let's hope that we can uh, cause another upset yeah, to be we, fair, are, we are capable we yeah, are. To, to, to be fair no one can underestimate you there can they no, no, we, we're a good set. Like I said, we're a bit, a bit, a bit in transition ourselves. We lost a bit of experience that went to uh, to um, Urs Finch, our uh, front row, um, Brad and Mike Fields. They went to Urs Finch and, and, and good luck to them. So we um, we relied on a few young lads coming through and hit, hit the ground running. And I do think uh, with them young lads coming in, they've given us a lot of energy. Really good in, in, in the defence and the work ethic and, uh, and, and the work rate has gone up. Um, yeah, we look a sharper team, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm really happy where we're at and it'll be interesting to see where we are after five games as well because I think we'll just get better and better. Like I said, it was our first hit up last week and um, we got a little bit leggy in the second half which was a little bit expected with the amount of effort and energy that we put in that first half. But yeah, I think um, we'll be in good stead after four or five games. I think that's an important point actually, isn't it? You know, because you, you, you're coming into this one, you've already got that first 80 minutes under your belt. Yeah, it might prove key. And, um, I don't know the preparations for Sid Hall. I know, I know that the coach up there won't be um, taking us lightly and, and they would have had a, a good pre-season and, and a good... Um, 
um, a good preparation themselves. But we, like I said, it's put us in good stead it, that, that it up last week against you, who are a quality team, and it did us no harm, Parker. You know what I mean? We, there's, you, you know, like you can you can train pre-season, you can do as many Malcolms as you want, but there's nothing like game fitness, and that game fitness put us in good stead, so he'll put a spot on for this Saturday. I think you've mentioned Malcolms. My tummy just started aching <laughs> straight away there. To be honest, I, I remember them from at school. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they've, they've covered a lot of Malcolms, our lads. They've, they've kept themselves fit. Um, we've done a lot of structure stuff in training as well. Uh, I was happy with our attack um, going into the UF game. Just wanted to see if our D and, and our fitness had rolled up to it. And to be honest, Parker, I knew after 15, 20 minutes that we'd go close with UF. I knew that I knew if we could keep them to a minimum then and see how my lads were reacting in the contact area and controlling the rock area, I knew after 15, 20 minutes that we maybe had them. Yeah, uh, and I know that. Lewis is your club captain, isn't it? Yeah, Lewis Gerrit. Um, but I, I, are, you ha are you tempted to hand the, hat, the armband onto oh, Tommy well, for his last gonna, game? I'll have, a, I'll have a word with Gez and um, <laughs> we can walk out together <laughs> hand in hand because they're best mates anyway. So we've got, um, again, we've got our young um, youthful team, uh, youth teams coming out walking on the pitch, which is really important. Was our under sevens, eights, and nines, I think, are, are going to walk out with the players like they did last week, which was a fantastic occasion. Uh, for see the, 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 the smiles on the face of the kids walking out with our players and who they want to aspire to be and, and being that um, that clock to, that clock open age team that's that means a lot to us so I think uh, Tommy and, uh, and and Lewis can walk out hand in hand as well to let, go out in style <laughs> it, it's something that both me and uh, me and you picked up didn't we Steve yeah we, we uh, were saying weren't we but uh, we thought it, it, it's making memories isn't it for the kids at the end of the day I mean they will remember this uh they'll tell their grand grandkids won't they you know you know when i was playing i first came down at the o'clock you know I, I went out it was a challenge cup you know when it comes on the television they'll talk about it and it's about making memories and like we said there's a big catchment area around here so it's uh, there's, a, there's a lot of kids to sort of you know hopefully give those memories too uh, one thing i wanted to ask how did you you feel your, your team coach with it certainly the new player the ball reel well I gave him warning about how strict the referee was going to be with it with the new player the ball rule and I did warn our players before that and lo and behold in the first set of six that we had the, the ball what happened illegal play the ball so yeah we're going to learn quick I think we're, just, we're, not, we're not going to be the only team that's going to fall foul to it it's, it's one of those that we need to make a conscious effort uh, play the ball correctly that's what the, the referees are looking for for smarting up the game which is fair enough to stop them um, Scruffy play the balls at pace, should we, so to speak. So that's what they're looking at, and that's something that we have to adhere to to the rules. We're gonna to have to play it, be smart. I've asked my players to be smart, think smart. If you've got to take that little bit of time to look that you're playing the ball correctly, then giving a penalty away, then so be it. Yeah, I must admit, I thought both sides, you know, settled into it, yeah. and, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it, it might have been to, to be fair. And I thought the ref controlled the game really well too. He's, he, he seemed, you know, sort of honest enough with both sides. Yeah, that, he had a good game. To be honest, last week the, the referee on Saturday, um, he had a, a good game. He was he was fair for, for both teams. He pulled us both on on the play of the ball early on. Which uh, we made us set up our stall and be more conscious of, of how we're playing it. And to be fair, yeah, you had a cracking game. I really rate him, yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned, to be fair, Steve, about um, the play the ball rules and to be honest, the rules in general. Because I, I was over at uh, an under 16s Barla Cup game at the weekend, so I ventured over to Lee Miners. They took on Lock Lane, and uh, this was the first time that I saw all of the rules in action. And it would be fair to say the referee blew his whistle quite a lot. So I reckon there must have been about 30 stoppages within the game. I think that's certainly something that we're all going to have to learn really quickly, to be honest. Yeah, very much so. Uh, and, and it's like any other rule, isn't it, to a certain extent that, that has come in. And certainly you see it more so from a Super League point of view, because obviously that's the eyes are on that. Uh, the beginning of the season, the rule comes in. It's hammered and hammered and hammered, and then certainly as you get drift towards through the mid and the end of the season, you know, does it get relaxed? And mm -hmm. then are they not as harsh on it? And that's that's the only thing I get concerned with because what happens then is, from a community point of view, I mean, you get you know sort of uh, coaches etc. frustrated with those types of things, crowds as well, which is only is understandable at the end of the day because 
if it's fur for both sides, like what I was just saying there to, to Mark, then, then then you can accept that. But when it's not, when you feel it's going against you, you know, it, it can be on a harsh. So it, it's going to be interesting to see whether it does tail off or whether they do manage to keep it, you know, sort of solid on the way through. Have you had the chance, Mark, to see a, a game in its full glory? No, well, no. Um, like I said, that you, I was warned about the play of the ball last week. I told our lads that they needed to to sharpen up on that. And, and to be fair, it, it was consistent with both teams. I think moving on through through the rest of the season, obviously, after the Challenge Cup, um, we're going to be working on with our players with the, with the with the with the tackling earlier as well of the game that's going to be changing this year. Um, so there's a few things that we need to get right as coaches and players. Um, and the other thing is as well, if if, if these decisions are going against you. You've got to keep your discipline as well. The last thing you want to do then is be losing your head. So yeah, it's, it's key that we we um, we clean up on the play of the ball, ball area after the Challenge Cup um, when we go into our NCLT uh, season. That we, uh, we we're making the right adjustments as well with our tackle technique. Uh, we want to give as li a little penalties away as, as we can for keep us in, in in any ball game. So that that's going to be absolutely key for us and, and most teams. I wonder whether we'll start seeing, you know, like when it when it gets to uh, training gear, we'll start seeing, uh, you know, special lines appearing around the armpit, and then it's like I tackle everything below that. Well, we've got a new sponsor this year, a new sponsor in O'Neill's, and uh, I've been talking to um, the the lad who's, who's been supplying with, uh, with kit samples and, and, and stuff for the kit that's going to be coming through, and there is actually training tops that you can only purchase now with a tackle height on. Right. So there's something that we may be looking at for getting into some of our training sessions. So I might be purchasing a few. Yeah, it's just like a simple two-coloured uh, top uh, under the armpit area, showing you where you should be uh, sending your shoulder in and, and, and below, and, and what we're safe to tackle. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's a good idea, and that, it's, uh, that is great because the bottom line is it's so easy to you know you've got to try and coach a lot of people to to do this correctly. Whereas if you've got that you know that sight thing straight away. Then hopefully that will be a lot easier for Zimbabwe. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 come on. No, yeah, like I said, we, we, we see we're in a little bit of a, a transition ourselves. So we, we're going to be working more on our, uh, our defensive tackling and technique after the uh, the Challenge Cup run, because um, obviously with the Challenge Cup, them rules haven't come into play yet. So I didn't want to give the players too many things yeah. to think about you know what I mean I, I've gone off last season's rules I've not really touched upon the, te the technique yet going into the NCL season because I want the lads in the, in the mind of we're playing the rules from last year I I into the Challenge Cup so I don't want to add any confusion yet to the lads so that's the way we've been tackling it down here at the club it's probably the best approach that to be fair yeah it's clarity at the end of the day isn't it you don't, don't you know you only concentrate on one thing that's in front of you at a time and that's a sensible thing that Mark's doing uh, I will say though you know having seen uh, a game where we, we had tackle tackle techniques and tackles called into into question it was interesting and both sides eventually got to grips with it apart from the Lee Miner side so this Lee Miner side I get the feeling weren't very used to losing okay uh, one of the best teams over this side of the Pennines up against one of the best sides at the age group from Yorkshire in Lock Lane who I've got to say were very good um, in the first half it was the most one-sided 4-0 that I think I've ever seen Miners had so much attacking possession but couldn't get through Lock Lane somehow hung on and hung on throughout and then right before the break they scored a converted try to go 6-4 in front at half time and then into the second half it was all opposite then. Lot Lane had all the pressure and they came up with two tries so they eventually won by 16 points to four. Uh, now after that game I spoke to a couple of the young players so this is Lou Adamson and Sonny Hetherington coming up now who uh, played starring roles for Lot Lane. So delighted to be joined by Sonny Heaven and Lou Adamson. Uh, so I've got to ask you, you know, because that's like the first game that I've seen under these new rules. How was it to play under? Uh, it's like a how do I put it? A challenge, because at first we didn't really know how to do it, but then we settled in, and as we settled in, we progressed better and better. Yeah, I had the feeling about that because, like, first ten minutes, I think you was penalised about what eight times or something like that. Or it felt like that anyway, and then you conceded that first try, but then you got stuck in, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the new rules were a bit frustrating, frustrating for us, frustrating for coaches. Had about eight penalties in about 
know every, we concede a penalty know every set and a lot of back to ones are real frustrating to play in. I will say though, you know, that you, you did get stuck in and you really sort of like took it to minors in the end. Yeah, I think as the game progressed, we sort of got more confident in our, in our playing ability and because we, we know where obviously we're good, so we, as we started playing more, our actual play started getting better and better and our hands started getting better and we just dug in even more. Uh, and tell us a little bit about this lot lane team, you know, so have, have you been sort of like going through the age groups sort of? Yeah, we've been pretty dominant for the past four years since it's been competitive, won every Yorkshire Cup and every league title available, so thought it'd be a challenge to make the step to the year above. I've got to say, you know, that, that's, that's a pretty formidable mm. record then, isn't it? Yeah, very, very good. Just, it was hard for our, thir- for our first Yorkshire Cup win, it was very, very hard for us because we, we went into half-time losing and so some of our players' heads were, heads were down, so we had to pick up mentality and just keep pushing ourselves to get better. And to be fair, it was almost like you dug into a little bit of that mentality today because I, I said to someone on the sideline that at one point everything seemed to be going in minor's way right up towards half time. And then you got that try right on the stroke of half time to go in front. Yeah, uh, belief in this team is unbelievable. We all believed in each other. All people doubted us going to this game saying you're going to get hammered, but we just did our job and do what we do best. I tell you what, it, it, says it puts a good light on the club as well, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, for the club it's amazing because we're obviously we're age below at the actual nationals and we're beating teams who are best in Lancashire who are age above. So yeah, it makes us feel very, very proud. So you're actually playing an age above. Yeah, we're we're we're, age, we're under 15s playing under 16s in our cup. Wow, that's even more credit for you to be honest. I didn't realise you know that you're an under 15 side. Yeah, we thought we'd make a step up and coaches believed us and we believed in each other. Uh, so what comes next? So obviously you've got the next round, but I, I, when, when, when does sort of like your league start? Have you got a few friendlies in the back line? Uh, I think we're going to try to get a friendly against the best our age in Lancashire, and then I think a couple of weeks after that, season starts. Okay. And, and have you guys been together all the way through the age groups? Yeah, we started about under eight. So a lot of us are still here from under eight since just that team chemistry. See, I mean that's good, isn't it? Because I mean, like like I said, you, you really got stuck in, and it's probably because you know each other as well as you do that, that you, you got that result yeah I think because we obviously have friends outside of rugby as well we've got like a bond going with, with all of us so it's just like the what's the word to put it the longer we stay together the more like chemistry we get and we get better I agree because you you know the, there was that stage where you, you really gutsed it out and I think if you you know if you didn't all get on and you weren't all part of a big big team and something bigger that would have been a game that could have got away with it from you a bit. Yeah, we've got a brother in this team that's pretty special. We haven't really been meet many times, about once or twice, and we all believe in each other and know what we have to do in the game. From players, referees and competitions, to clubs and playing fields, we talk about the lot on the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Tell you what, was some of that um, sort of symptomatic of how you found teams coming through, Tommy? Uh, yeah, we... Obviously, I played at Portugal, which was a bottom division team, and then came to the plot, which was like a two division, three division step up. Um, yeah, we when I was under 16s at Clock, we played a few Prem teams and we turned a few of them over in the Cup. I uh, think we ended up getting beat by Jude in the semi final, we were one of the top teams. Um, but yeah, you, you do come across some like really top sides and you know, especially at that age, a lot of them players end up moving on and going pro as well. It's impressive, isn't it, Mark, that an under-15 side has entered an under-16 competition. And as I mentioned, they beat the best side in Lancashire. Well, that's it. The lads uh, were certainly buzzing there on the interview, talking to you, Parky, and good on them. They looked like they, uh, they had a lot of energy there. So, yeah, credit to them for step up at that age, a group, and step up a 12-month. If you're, um, you're good enough, you're old enough, I guess. And... Um, Good on them, and uh, yeah, they'll 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 not um, forget that uh, that winning a lot for a long while. I don't think. I think certainly, you know, when we talk about the Barla Cup, it's still alive, isn't it, in the different age groups. I know, particularly m- m- maybe at first team level, it's drifted off into more of a you take part if you can or if you yeah. fancy, you know, getting a few extra games in, you know. But it still means something, doesn't it, going through the younger age groups? That's it. Yeah, it's massive. The Barla Cup. I remember playing in it myself and uh, having some good, really good memories in the Barla Cup. And, and yeah, it, it probably, um, yeah, um, let's, let's make it more of a, of a big occasion with the open age, you know what I mean? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, uh, prestigious competition and, yeah, it's, it's massive in the, in the youngsters' game as well and, it, and it's good to see that um, lads are, are enjoying playing in the Barla Cup. Uh, did, 
did you have any other sort of memories that come to the fore I've been thought about that from Barla Cup days um, I don't I think I only ever played one game in Barla Cup which did was you? under 18 and we got knocked out in the first round um, <laughs> oh, okay then we won't go there that's, <laughs> that's, that's got to be the shortest answer ever I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got knocked out the first round by Wollstone. We had to play over Sutton Man, which was a tiny bitch, and it just didn't work out for us. And then when we ended up playing him here, I think we put 70 on him. So, yeah, I think that's the only game we played. I think my brother won it twice. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I think I only played one game. So he kind of rubs it in from a family <laughs> point of view. Do you know what? He brought it up last week. Um, <laughs> I think that he's got that one, he's got over me, like, but I think that's about all he's got. <laughs> uh, I know certainly there's a, a number of games that are still going to take place over this coming weekend. I think there was quite a few postponements and what have you from last week. So, um, but we'll we'll keep you up to date as best we can, and, and no doubt I'll be out and about over the course of the season. Try and get out on my sa- Saturday and Sunday mornings wherever I can, you know. But uh, fantastic to hear those two lads, and how confident were they for 15? Yeah, I bet it was a good game for go and watch Park. It's, uh, it's the, the lads look like they, uh, they they were buzzing from that. Win and, and good on them for quarter to a, a good a good club like lately East and um, I know that they've got some cracking good uh, young young teams coming down there so for lot lane to travel and go and get a, a scalp like Lee East um, yeah it, it's a credit to uh, to lot lane that was a, a big victory for them. There'll be a couple of people shouting at this podcast now, going, "It's miners, it's miners! Don't, yeah. don't, don't go mixing the sides up, in Lee." <laughs> oh gosh! No, we don't. We don't. Apologies. Wanna, we, don't do ca- we don't want to. We don't want to cause a, a Lee World War or oh, anything Lord. like that. Oh, it's the last thing. <laughs> last thing you want to trust me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what were your thoughts listening to that, Steve? I, I, I've said it before. When you interview some of these young lads, it's like they've been doing it for years. I know when you've done it with uh, some of the Lions. Uh, guys who, who were actually older than them, the ones you yeah. been to. I mean, they just just fall straight into it. I don't know whether it's because they're used to social media and have been doing it, you know, for for years and years. In from from their point of view, but they're really really good. Uh, but from a team point of view, I mean, yeah, the confidence. That's the that's the you know one of the main things, isn't it? At the end of the day, like Mark was saying, you know, to to come over to Pennines and uh, uh, to Lee and. and uh, you know, do do those types of things. You know, it's uh, it's uh, all in good stead for the team. Uh, let's look forward to the Challenge Cup, shall we? So let's start first of all here. Clock face, clock face against Siddle. Absolutely fantastic tie, uh, and we're going to be live and uh, attempting to bring you full match commentary as we did last time out, aren't we? I, I don't think it's an attempt this time, Parker. I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we know. I, what buttons, I know we, we know were what panicking were pre- a little bit. We know last what buttons time. were pressing this time. Don't we? That always helps. <laughs> and, and you know what? We, we couldn't have asked for a better game to 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 start off uh, because it was absolutely superb. Uh, I mean, the atmosphere from the crowd at the back, and, and from Mark's point of view, I'm sure you'll be looking forward to a similar, if not better, crowd this time. Yeah, the crowd was important for us last week against you, and. Um, I've been having, like I said, I've been speaking to people local in, in the clock area and text messages and, and uh, conversations. I know that we're going to have a massive support again. Um, I can imagine it being really um, packed to the rafters here, here at clock and that'll only bode well for us because we'll, uh, the crowd will get behind us. They can be that extra man for us on that pitch and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get over the line and, and, and they can shelter us on to victory, hopefully. Yeah. Tom, from your point of view, is it... Uh I, I presume it's good having a, a, a big crowd coming to watch it. Or, or does it make you a little bit nervous? Do you know what? Um, it doesn't make me nervous. I can't speak obviously for other lads, but it's good. Um, it, it gets us over the line. I remember when we played Wolston here in the playoff final the other year, I think the crowd got us over the line there as well. I think that was a game we won by two points and all. Obviously, we won by two points the other week. The crowd, especially towards the end, every single tackle, we, 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 like, it must be a nightmare for the other team. Like, and I imagine there'll probably be more here this week. Uh, I bet would have caught wind a bit in the community as well. I think there'll be another another punch down. Obviously, seen, there was a few clubs down as well. We've seen a lot of Finch lads yeah. behind Stick Zegan was on as well, which was good. Um, and I think I've seen a few at Crossfield lads spying in the corner and all. So <laughs> maybe it'll caught wind and we might see a bit more on Saturday. Yeah, because that's the thing with the Challenge Cup being right at the beginning of the season. You've got no rugby to watch really on, on, on television, etc. So these games are, are important for those people who do like the rugby league. And the other side of that coin, from a club point of view, and, uh, and getting you know sort of money over the bar in the coffers, etc., to help the club, they're very important in that respect as well. Yeah, we've had uh, good exposure from our local newspaper, the Saint Helens Star. Can't thank them enough as well. They put us a middle, um, a full page uh, spread on with our pictures, with our walking out. Um, 
against the uh, against you with last week, uh, holding the hands of the, of the young kids from the sevens, the eights, and nines teams, which was fantastic to see the smile on the faces, and um, they give us some good exposure this week, and that was really good to see. We had a bigger uh, right up in the back of the, the, the star as well. And I think that that exposure has made people aware of how big this tie is this weekend. And I'm, I am expecting more people to come and support us. And yeah, if, you, you, you know how it is financially. Every club needs that financial support to keep this uh, this community game going. So it was absolutely massive for us last week, last week. And, and, and the financial support and the game that we got from that game was great. And it will just always it'll just go back into into the kids. Uh, and also as well, you know, from, from that point of view, it sounds like we're going to have to get here even earlier if we're anticipating a larger crowd. I think we're going to have to get a tent and come on Friday. <laughs> for the of uh, so, I mean, to be fair, you know, you hear people going camping out at Glasgow, don't you? You know, days before it actually happens. If, if I'm not wrong, you have, is it Clockfest or something like that? Yeah, where they have a, a, like a, a music festival every yeah. year as well, and that, that does well, so yeah. Yeah, clock fest. <laughs> clock fest. <laughs> yeah, see. Wow, well, I'm learning all the time. Well, th- well, this is a new park. I mean, like we were just discussing the, you know, the, the, you know, getting finances over the bar. It's important, and if you've got the facilities to be able to do these types of things, then yeah, grab it with both hands and, uh, and get your uh, your money in as uh, as best you can at the end of the day. But yeah, clock fest is the place to be. <laughs> okay, we've heard the uh, the clock face uh, point of view. Let us switch sides, shall we? Uh, well, earlier in the week, I caught up with the uh, Siddle Secretary, Joe McCormack, and this is our conversation. Uh, how are you doing, Joe? Are you okay? Good, thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks for having us on and uh, uh, looking forward to the game at the weekend. Yeah, thanks for coming on, to be honest. You know, like, um, I, I, I'm coming at it with, from a, a slightly different viewpoint because I've already seen Clockface once this season. We've been fortunate enough to put a kit together where we can go out and do, you know, commentaries at, at different community venues. So we, we trialled it all uh, with a, a glowing success last time out in the first round and we're back for round two. So uh, we have we thought we'll go back to, uh, you know, some terrible territory which we already know about um if i can start with this have as, as far as you're aware has siddle ever played clock face before yes we played them it will be almost five years to the day come game day on saturday uh we played them in january 2019 uh in the challenge cup um it was a, it was a good game it uh, we came out on top the scoreline flattered us i think we won 24 nil in fact, it was 24 nil at half time. The second half was scoreless. Oh, really? Well, it was a big. It was a big crowd. They were they were a decent side. We we played well that day. We defended really well, uh, but we had to because they they kind of came at us, particularly in the first half. Um, but yeah, it, good memories. Yeah, it was a, a good battle uh, on the field, and it was nice and friendly off it. Uh, and what does being in the Challenge Cup mean to Siddle? And and and, and how have you gone in it previously? I suppose. Um. Yeah, we've got a fairly rich history. I mean, I guess our highlights are we've actually beaten two semi-pro sides in the past. Or so I can't remember the exact years. I think it was something like 2009 or 2010. We went to Doncaster and beaten 26-0, um, which was a bit of a shock all around. But we we, we played really well that day. Um, and then about six, seven years ago, we beat uh, Newcastle 30 points to four at our place. Uh, they had Daryl Oldforts in the side that day too. So we've we've played probably I guess ten to fifteen sides uh, pro teams over the years. So yeah, we uh, it's it's one of those days that the whole club looks forward to. Not just the players, it's the coaching staff. We get the juniors involved, and uh, we, we 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 tend to make a kind of club day of it. So yes, yeah, uh, good good memories. So so as an away side, you know, like in a, a Challenge Cup tie like this, how how do you treat it? You know, is it treated any differently? I know Clock in the first round, they had like representatives from all of the different age groups of youngsters uh, leading the sides out, which I thought was a beautiful touch, to be honest. Yes, and they did that the last time we went over as well. Um, I guess it's it's a bit more difficult for to get lots of junior teams. Mm-hmm. Kind of, you know, it's a, it's a it's a over an hour's trip over there, but we have got juniors going over um we let supporters always come on the players bus and we'd fill the bus um so it's already full a week before the, the trip so with with plenty of juniors on the on the bus um i guess we're, we're we're treating it that you know um it's our first game of the season clock have got an advantage there because obviously they already they've already played once um 
but we'll be we'll be treating them as if they're a Premier Division team. We've got to give them respect. You can't go onto a rugby pitch and not give the uh, the opponents respect. They're beating Hewith, so we know it's going to be a test. Yeah, I mean Hewith were you know they went great guns last season, and obviously they're going to be taking their place in the in the Premier Division this year, aren't they? So, uh, as you say, they're not to be taken lightly. No, and we wouldn't have taken them lightly anyway. But the the fact that they've gone out and beaten Hewith has certainly made us. Uh, sit up and take notice so uh, we need to go out there uh, and give it our all from me one uh, now uh, when someone mentions you know Siddle to you mate that I, I always think you know fantastic bastion of community rugby league um, you know I know that I've we, we've spoken in the past haven't we during that time just coming out of Covid about how the club had coped with that entire period um, and it would be fair to say that since coming back into you know regular regular playing, um, the the clubs reach the playoffs in each of the years, but they haven't managed to get home ties, have they? No, no. Uh, so we finished in uh, sixth and fifth of the past two full seasons, uh, and as you say, which means you kind of you're up against it. Um, and we've managed to the first the two seasons ago, we won our first two ties in the playoffs, uh, and then we lost to Hunslet. Uh, and then last season went up to Wath Brow uh, in the first round of the playoffs and, and had a tremendous last minute win. It was a phenomenal game that the, one. Last kick of the game, drop goal by Christian Ackroyd. Um, and then we had to go to Mayfield, another away game, and it was it was a it was a game too far for us. We were we were beaten by the better team. Mayfield did a number on us. Um, so yes, um, we've been we've been steady without being spectacular, and um, I think. The challenge that the coaching team has set the players this season is, is to is to be more consistent uh, and a bit tight in defence, give away fewer penalties and um, maybe just be a bit smarter in possession. Uh, we've certainly got the yeah. talent. It's just it's just putting it together consistently over the course of the season. Uh, and 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 looking at it, you got lads last season who'd done pretty well on the field, hadn't you? Lads like Bat uh Connor McCallum, who was the top try scorer, uh, Henry Turner, who was also in the and about with the tries, uh, and players as well that would have been played perhaps more of a significant part, but for injuries. I know injuries are part and parcel of the sport, though, aren't they? They are, um, you know, um, not not looking to mourn too much because every club get injuries, but we, we were hit particularly badly, particularly at the start of the season. Um, so we were kind of just hovering above relegation zone at 10 games in at the season because of the injuries there. But uh, um, we had a really good finish to the season and that's what we're hoping is going to spring us into uh, 2024. We were one of the form teams. I think probably only Hunslet picked up more points than us in the last 10 games of the season. Um, so yeah, we're hoping that that kind of is going to stand us in good stead as we head into the, this season. And certainly, coaching team, if it's anything to go by, you know they're going to be striving and reaching for that success, aren't they? Yeah. So, so uh, the, the the head coach Gareth English is assisted by Jake Connor of uh, of Huddersfield. Um, they're a good team. They work together a lot. Um, they plan the training sessions. We've been in training since early December. Um, and Gareth uh, tells me that training has gone really well. Uh, numbers attending have, have been up. Um, there's more competition for places. Uh, we've been helped um, in pre-season by our under-18s from last season won the Yorkshire Cup and the National Cup and came second in the league as well. So they're a good group of lads there, um, and most of them have stayed on with us and are pushing to open age in 2024 so there's a bigger group uh, obviously some of them are going to be um, playing the trade in the Yorkshire Men's League which is our yes. second team but there will be a nucleus there that I'm sure uh, uh, there's a lot of talent let's put it that way and um, we're hoping that one or two of them spring up into the uh, into the NCL it's very encouraging that isn't it you know and it's something that as a uh, as a club any community club you've you've got to have one eye on the future haven't you and sort of what you've got coming through yes we do want our players to move on and you know be a success that they can but you know not everybody's going to reach that professional level are they or the very high the very you know high echelons of the game um so it's good to have this conveyor belt of talent coming through and people able to look and think, ah, you know what, I've got a chance of playing for the first team here at Siddle. Absolutely. I guess the, uh, the poster boy for our juniors is Morgan Smithies. Yes. Um, 
who, who, who played as a junior throughout throughout his career at Siddle before moving on to Wigan. Uh, but the, the flip side of the coin is, is that his brother Kanin's our first team captain. So it's fantastic uh, to have uh, two guys from the same family, one of them who's become a, a Super League and now hopefully an RL star, and the other one is um, captain in our first team. So um, that that's, that's kind of the... The process that you want to go through, where you know you want lads to make it, but you also want enough to be around that you've got a competitive first team playing NCL. Definitely, definitely, and and another sort of recent success has been Amir Burra and the way that he's gone about his business. You know, because I suppose when he got released by Wigan, he, it would have been quite easy, I suppose, for him to go and sulk and be lost to the game. But he's he stuck to his guns. He's he had a very good season last year at Salford, didn't he? He did. He's a, and again, he's he's one of the players that we look up to, and. And he's, you know, he's he's one of those that we can use as a benchmark for our junior players. He's, uh, you know, he's often seen back at the club too. Great guy. Uh, now I know that uh, particularly a, a lot of clubs round about this time of year and perhaps a little bit earlier, they take to social media, don't they, to sort of like say, "Come on down, get back involved in rugby league." Um, I don't think I've ever really seen that from a Siddle point of view. Is that because you, you, your connections are usually quite good? No, we do. We do, we are. Uh, uh, our social media, um, we do promote to get players in every season. Um, it might have maybe come across like that, but no, we're, we're, we're always open to having new players coming along. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly not a closed shop, Dave. Oh, no, I wasn't suggesting that it was a closed shop by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, some some clubs kind of like, they shout it from the rooftops and you see the same postings, you know, sort of like three times a week. You come on down to this place. And I, I, I just get the feeling it's more of a steady ship. That's kind of what I was getting yeah. at. Yeah, no, that's 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 a fair comment. I guess for some of our um, junior groups, we've probably already got too many players, so mm. we we don't want to be in a position where we're encouraging parents to send the kids down if they're not going to get a game. But we, it's that balancing act. So so some age groups have got larger squads than others, and so we we kind of um, promote for new players where it's more appropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know certainly you've already talked about you know the group of, of young players that are, are coming through uh, Clock Face have been faced with a, a similar sort of I'm going to say rebuilding phase you know because you, you, every few years you do need to sort of have players being introduced don't you you know to sort of like um, reevaluate and, and sort of refresh everything I, I guess you know so um, th- they've had a, a good clutch of young players that are coming through the system there so and, and that really does set you up as a club for, for years to come doesn't it? It does. It does. I'll be, I'll be honest. We don't know that much about Klopp because you, was, we've only ever played him once, which was five years ago. Um, but I'm sure that you know they've got a fantastic junior setup, and there'll be that conveyor belt of, of talent that's that's coming up the ranks. So uh, yes, um, I'm sure they'll be long, young, lively, and enthusiastic at the weekend, Dave. <laughs> and we'll have to be ready for it. Perhaps not too enthusiastic, hopefully, for you, you know, in that case. <laughs> um, I really appreciate appreciate you, you know, giving your time to tell us all about what you've got going on there. Uh, if I could just ask you one more thing before we finish, and that's, I suppose, your, your thoughts. I, I, I went to my first um, Barla Cup game today involving uh, under-16 sides because I wanted to get a bit of a feel for how... The game might look this season with a lot of the uh, the new interpretation, shall we say, of the laws and the changes that have come in. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna really going to put you on the on the spot with that. But what I what I was sort of wanting to to sort of like was to give you my sort of thoughts on it. You know, in that uh, the the game that I was at, there was. Uh, there seemed to be a ton of stoppages, a ton of penalties, and there was a game of rugby waiting to break out there. And, and, and it took quite a while until one side thought, hang on, we can actually get back to playing this rugby. Do you think that um, as we get into the season, we'll see a ton of penalties and then it might ease a little bit? Yes, I think well, I, th- I think he's going, most clubs, I think, are going to be nervous about the start of the season. Um, again, certainly, you know, NCL Premier Division, it's it's pure rugby. Mm. Um, nobody wants to go to a game and see high shot after high shot after high shot. Um, but I think there's a lot of nervousness that it's going to take some time to adapt to the rules. Uh, and we don't want to see a penalty fest uh, for the sake of it. But yes, we'll, we'll have to adapt like every other club. Um, and we've been practicing it in training. Um, and we'll have to wait and see what, how it pans out. But from what I can gather, those new rules don't apply in the Challenge Cup for the weekend. Yes, not that it means that we're going to go out and tackle any higher, but um, 
um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it will be the, the start of the NCL season. Uh, I'll, I'll say what I've said to everybody that I've I've sort of met so far this season because I've I've been, had the fortune to do a, a few pro games as well, um, and the thing that they're really hot about is around that play the ball. So the days of the just being able to roll it between your feet that they're, they're numbered for the time being. Yes, and again, that's something that we've been practicing, and uh, and hopefully the lads will switch on quickly because yeah, you you don't want to be giving away too many penalties and conceding possession and tries. Joe, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure chatting to you as always. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate it. And best of luck at the weekend. Thank you very much, Dave. From players, referees, and competitions to clubs and playing fields, we talk about the lot on the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. We certainly do talk because we can. And I tell you what, I think I, I think brought me on record for longest ever question. I was, I was listening back to that then thinking, come on, ask that question. Then I said about my last thing and then it was suddenly just all my opinion. <laughs> Sorry about that if I go on like that from time to time. <laughs> No, 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 nobody knows this. Nobody knows this. <laughs> I did. I've just, I've just outed myself in front of everybody, you know, so never mind. <laughs> uh, Mark won't be happy to telling them about some, you know, having to watch themselves at the play of the ball. Oh, that's that's the think, secret tactic. I think they've already known. I think they've already known, to be fair, you know, but uh, um, it was really interesting hearing him saying about what they've got going on and the, the clutch of young players they've got coming through at Siddle as well, wasn't it, Mark? So it's encouraging hearing that it's happening everywhere. Yeah, the, the similar to us. By the sounds of it, they're listening to him. Um, you see, he's promoting these 18s that have come through that last year, and, and good on them. They're a good set. Um, we got to the semi-final of the uh, the national cup last year, and they uh, they got to the final and won it. So I know that uh, it would have been a good final if we could have got there to to, to play them. And I know there's not much between our, our 18 set up. So obviously, said all are on a the high. They've got some good youth coming through. So have we, and um, it just makes it uh, even better for Saturday for a tasty game. To be honest, it certainly does set up a fantastic game. <coughs> uh, Tommy, you know, again, I, I feel like, you know, we should come to you here, you know, because you, you could be the final selling point. You know, if, if somebody's listening to this from around the, the place here at Clock Face and they're thinking, what should I be doing on a Saturday? I know what, I'll go to Tommy's leaving day. <laughs> no, I think you might be the first person to ever say that. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's not about me on Saturday, do you know what I mean? Obviously, it'd be nice to get a win on my last game, but like whether it was my last game or not, we still want to, you know, go out there and beat Sid all and get to the next round. Obviously, we've got a few ex-players that are, will be coming in in the next round. Uh, Sean and Luke Farber, who play for Crew and Rochdale. It'd be nice to you know, turn Sid all over and maybe get a little game against them. Um, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Tell you what, we've got some cracking ties coming up, haven't we, in this round, Steve? We well, have got quite a few. Uh, and uh, obviously, still uh, a couple of local sides down here from uh, St. Tannins in the mix as well. Yeah, let me run through who's playing who. So on uh, Saturday in front of the BBC cameras, it's Lee Miners Rangers up against Stan Ingley. That should be an interesting tie. And, and interesting off the field as well, because they're having a get-together there uh, based on a, a Challenge Cup tie that took part in 1979. So what they've done is it, it, uh, that year, Lee played against Lee Miners. So they've invited all of the players that played in that game to come as guests of the club. That's going to be one heck of a party, that, isn't it? Well, that's the thing to do. Again, if you're going to promote a game, I mean, if you can get those guys down, I mean, and like we were talking about before, about the uh, the young kids coming out with the, the lads and holding their hands during a Challenge Cup final, creating memories. There's, th there's the excellent example. That's a memory from years ago that they still want to... Uh, look back on it and, and get all the guys down and I'm sure there'll be some uh, some stories told. And if I'm looking at another potential couple of upsets, you've got Donny Tolbar up against West Hull. Donny Tolbar with the home advantage, I mean that could count for a lot there, couldn't it? Yeah, it's another one of those where uh, it's a, an unknown an unknown thing and Donny Tolbar we know from following the Yorkshire Men's League in the past that uh, you know, they're not a, a bad side at all, are they? Uh, and what, what's your thoughts on Hunslet ARLFC heading over to Freiston. Uh Again, uh, having watched Freiston uh, last year, uh, you know, they're, they're a good side, but we know what Unslit are like. Uh, <laughs> they go through the motions and, and, and they're just a class side. Yeah, a double 
very very tough one that for Freiston uh, one team that I'm certainly going to give a shout out to is Hull Dockers so they're up against Wathbrow Hornets at the weekend um, but interestingly enough they appointed a first team coach I think we've already touched on this story That's in the right, past yeah. haven't we yeah. they appointed a first team coach who then got appointed a scholarship coach at Hull Kingston Rovers so he's gone back to them and said I can't do it anymore and they've been struggling to fill um, you know like a, a, the, the first team coaching role so I th- said, thought I would give them a, a big mention they've got a number of assistant coaches and other coaches that have been doing other age groups that are, are coming together and they said for the time being until they can get someone in situ they're going to kind of um, sort of swap round the responsibility you know and sort of keep it together as a group of coaches that's one way that could potentially work for a minute I know it's a bit unusual Mark yeah, no, I, I think um, it, it, getting um, experienced coaches input and then settling and how they all want to play and, and having the same ideas and going out there and executing it with the lads will be crucial. Um, yeah, good, good luck to them. They're actually going to be our first game away in the NCL, actually, um, Old Dockers, so we look forward to that trip um, later on in, in, the, in the year. And yeah, I, I wish them well for that tie as well. So does this mean that you're contacting your Wolf Bro spies a little bit later on then? Well, I hope they do a video so I can have a little gander, you know. <laughs> Um, so also oh, this is a really interesting tie for me so Lock Lane who themselves are under a new coaching uh, sort of duo for the season uh, they're taking on Edinburgh Eagles who upset the apple cart at Lauka last round and do you know what Parky this goes back to the unknown doesn't it uh, we, we've obviously known uh, Edinburgh and Eagles from a chat with them uh, I think it was about 12 months or so ago uh, and it's just one of those things when you don't know much about a side uh, it's uh, it, it, it's difficult in, the, in that respect. So yeah, I, to be fair, you know it could go either way. I think we've dodged a bullet as well because Edinburgh Eagles have about five Fijians playing for them. So from a commentary point of view, I'll be pretty pleased to be calling Clockface and Siddle players his day. <laughs> Can you imagine that somebody local getting them? I don't think I'd be, I'd be funny in the next park because I can pronounce those names. <laughs> um, you talked about stepping to the unknown for Rochdale Mayfield. They're doing just that. They're on the road to West's Warriors. Uh, yeah, again, I'm, I'm Rochdale Mayfield. We, we, last season, if you remember, they went on that run where they were unstoppable. Yeah, they beat Cornwall, didn't they? That's correct. So, uh, I mean, you, you, you've got to you know, sort of look at... I mean, I suppose at the beginning of the season as well, you don't know how things are going to start because it, you know, you're starting from a it's cold at the end of the day, which you're not, you know, uh, used to playing in. I mean, don't get me wrong, the British weather isn't actually scorching during summer, but I mean, when you're starting off, you haven't played much. Obviously, you're playing in the cold and, and, and different things like that. But uh, yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, while well, you've mentioned the weather, we should go over to Tommy, you know, because he could he could send he could just make us all jealous with like reports from Northern Australia for the year, <laughs> couldn't you? Um, yeah, I think it's about 35 degrees there now. Um, I think I'll put wow. some cream on my head. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was just going to say, I'm sure the lads will be giving you loads of that as presents for going away with it. Well, you know what, I've just bought some before, but if I get some more, I won't complain. <laughs> when we played Egremont to Rome here last year, I had put some, some cream on my head. I, I shaved it all off last year, and yeah, I think I'll have to get used to that when I go over there. Yeah, I, I was down for that Egremont game, and it was a hot one, I must have It was a hot one. Uh, and then the other game on Saturday, Hammersmith Hills Hoists up against West Bowling. Well, this is the name we always talk about, don't we? We, we know very little about them. We, we know quite a bit about West Bowling. And, and I'm going to say, uh, West Bowling are, are going to be, uh, you know, they're going to be a force in the in the Prem this year. So I I, I can see them turn them out, turn them out. Hammersmith Hills Hoist over. Uh, there's two games on Sunday, so Oral St James there at home to York Acorn in uh, a game that's going to be on the Sportsman Channel. Um, what's your thoughts on that one, Steve? Do you, know, do you know what? Going back to what we were saying about the fa- the Barla final when Earth Finch took on Siddle, which was a Northwest men's side against uh, obviously an NCL side. I mean, well, we looked at that game and. It, if you went to that game and you you were a, you know not a regular watcher of the sport, you wouldn't have known there was any great differences between divisions wise. Oral, uh, they've got a good pedigree to be fair. Uh, I, I mean, so 
I can see Arnold doing that one. I that count. Now, if you do also fancy watching some more Challenge Cup action on Sunday, there is a game between the Royal Navy and Thato Heath. So Thato are travelling down to Portsmouth. Um, and I think I said this is where I had my six degrees of separation when I went there, because Andy Flintoff made his Lancashire debut doing the old cricket down there as well years and years ago. But anyway, um, that's going to be shown on uh, Forces TV. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. Great. So that's, uh, I think it's great that we get all these... Um, d- oh, uh, you know all these different um, broadcasting of I think it's important as well for the community game what do you think Mark? No yeah uh, as much exposure as, as we can so again and there's some mouth-watering ties there that's going to go ahead at the weekend and what and people w- would like to see it and if that's on on telly or game to the ground if, you, if you're lucky enough um, there's some good rugby league that's to be played and yeah uh, any promotion with, 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 with uh, on the telly is fantastic for the sport we, we always said though you can't beat actually being at a game you know so we'll always promote that first and foremost don't we yeah totally agree I, I must have made say last week uh, when we were here for the, the, the clock game the support again is absolutely superb what I do hope win lose or draw well we can't draw because you've got somebody's got to win at the weekend but I mean moving on into the rest of the season I hope that that crowd that come down will continue to to support the lads because I mean wherever uh, you know rugby is being placed at the end of the day they need the support of people to coming down and you know helping the clubs through but uh, uh, it helps the players on the pitch as well as we just uh, we just found out as well oh we're just about done and dusted here now aren't we we've gone through the we've gone through the games next week we're going to have a, a, a cracking look through exactly what happened um, thank you so much for having us as guests down at clock face we're really looking forward to saturday yeah, we're looking forward to it. Like I said, all our preparations has gone well. We, we're, we know we're up against it. We said all that are a pedigree club, NCL Prem team, and um, let's hope that we can give a good account of ourselves and uh, let's see if there's another upset on the cards and I won't put it past us. Uh, so, so, Tommy, just before I finish, how am I pronouncing your name on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> how are you pronouncing me what, sorry? How am I pronouncing your name on Saturday for the commentary? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tom's there, there we go. That'll do. That'll do. I, I, I do love it when I get the player's point of view in there. Yeah, at least you can't get it wrong. Then, no, yeah, no. Why was there a confusion with that? <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, was just, I, was just, I was just saying, you know, so that's yeah, it. Tom's there, there Oh, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how you go through, through a broadcast, Carly. You know, somebody, for instance, like yourself, you might be calling Thomas, Tommy, etc. And then no, somebody I'll take going, them all. Oh, God, my name's Tom. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, we've pulled, been pulled up a time or two. We have. Surprised. So I thought I'd ask while we were here, is it Thomas? Is it Tom? Is it Tommy? Yeah. To be fair, Mark gets half of our players uh, <laughs> there, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Uh, so we'll, we'll head off. Steve, pleasure as always, mate. Yeah, great park, I enjoyed it. And uh, once again, thanks very much to Clock Face for uh, hosting this. And all the best for the weekend. No, thanks for coming down. More than welcome anytime. Cheers, guys. Every tackle, every try, every scrum. Green Cooling is proud to be part of the Community Rugby League family.